people in, in, in on the planet, right? You can look at other um, animals or whatnot, and yeah, they have their things. But like humans, we got so many different habits in our life. And I felt like as we prepare for God and where he's taking us as a church, I felt like this morning he was really putting in my heart to talk about this thought of habits. And here's why. We have a lot of healthy habits in our life. God honoring habits. We have a lot of things that we do every day that are pleasing to God that help us physically and emotionally. But then we have a lot of unhealthy habits every day that we do that if we're not careful, they start to own us and in the end, someone say destroy us. Destroy. Destroy us. I found this, I found this quote and I really, really liked it because I thought it kind of summed up today what I want to talk about. And I got a ton of notes this morning, so we're gonna be here for like two hours, maybe three <laughs> at the most. Is that good. cool? Yeah. Cool. George is four. Alright, George said four, so we're gonna go for four this morning. I'm just kidding. We'll only be here for like I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I'm just kidding. We'll get you out of here in time. There's no football game today, no um, no Super Bowl today, so I'll get you in time to hit, hit wherever you got to go. But I want to read this real fast. I, I read this a while ago, and it really where this thought habits came from. I read this thought, and it really kind of got me to think about my life personally. And here's the thought. It says this. Successful people do consistently. Someone say consistently. consistently. What other people do occasionally. Someone say occasionally. Okay. So, I'll read it one more time so it locks in. You may not get it, but we're going to go in a direction this morning. I pray that really starts to open and get personal. Like, I'm going to be the friend that walks in your house and just doesn't sit on the couch. I'm going to go to your fridge this morning and grab the milk and drink out of it, all right? Because I really want to make sure we can get personal this morning and really make sure we can be open and honest before God. Because it's one thing for me to share about something and to say this is a good thing you need to fix it in your life it's another thing to really be open and honest and to, to make the steps to make progress does that make sense um and so i want to read this one more time successful people do consistently someone say consistently, consistently. what other people do occasionally so you may look at someone here in church and you say man that person has a great prayer life like, they come in on Sundays, they're praying, like they're growing with God. Man, I want to be like them. They got it together. Maybe you see someone, they're really good with, with money. I don't know. And they, they do a really good job. Like, man, I want to be like them one day. Or you find someone who's really good with relationships. They're a people person. My wife is like that. She is so good with, I mean, she can walk into Ollie's and, like, be best friends with someone random. I'm like, where'd you go to college with them? And she's like, no, I just, you know, met them. Like, I would have never guessed. Like, sometimes people have just a way with things, and you're like, man, I want to one day be like that. But here's the thing. You never really see all the little steps over the years that got them to where they're at. Does that make sense? Come on, While you look at someone up here this morning who is worshiping God, who's lifting their hands, and they're praying, and they're seeking the Lord, and you say, wow, that is powerful. Like, man, I hope one day to be as real with God as that person is. You weren't there through all the different things that had happened that grew their relationship with God. Come on. And so my heart today is that we can dissect a few things to see some habits that I believe God wants to give us as a church as we move forward. Because I believe, again, if we want to do this thing right, we want to walk with God. If we want to see God do what only you can do in your life. It's going to start with small little steps. Someone say small little steps. Small little steps. Now, when I think about successful people, one of the main guys I think about in the Bible is this guy named Jesus. Anyone know him? Yeah. Anyone read about him before? Oh, yeah. All right. A few people. All right. So I think about this guy, Jesus, and I think about this. I was talking about, you know, the habits and thinking about successful. And I thought about this. You never see Jesus in the Bible, like, give an excuse like, man, I don't have time to pray. This guy, Peter, man, he is he is annoying and, and always asking me questions. All the disciples, all these crowds of people, like, want everything from me. You never see him like, man, I just, I, I, you know, I don't have time to pray. You see him, and as you read the scriptures, as you read the gospels, you see a consistent pattern of him getting away from the crowd and what? Praying. Spending time with his father. Come on. It was a consistent habit. You look at this guy named Paul, right? You guys know the guy named Paul? Yeah. Like, if you don't know him, just read some of the, read some of the scriptures in the New Testament. And he probably wrote it because he wrote a lot of the New Testament. But the cool part is this. You see a constant pattern in his life of him going into temples. And he says, my calling is for people who do not know him. And he has this constant habit and custom of going to the temple and sharing with non-believers. It was a pattern, or some would say habit. Yeah. And I read this, I read this quote this week from Sean Covey, and I thought this is so good. It says this, 
Our habits, someone say habit. Yeah. Our habits will make us, someone say make me. Make me. Or they'll break us. We become what we repeatedly do. Amen. You are the series of what you repeatedly do. You don't like where your life's at right now? Well, let me tell you what. You're a pattern of what you're repeatedly doing. You're, 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 you're comfortable with yourself, but there's some things, ah, I wish they were different. You're a pattern of what you're repeatedly doing. And so to do that this morning, I want to read you a passage of scripture. And I pray this will open your heart, and then we're going to give you um, like 20 points, maybe 24, if we have enough time, maybe 50, um, oh, depending right. on where we're at. Because we got a lot of habits, right? We need to break this morning, right? Oh, right. I'm just kidding. I only got three. Um, this morning, come back next week. You don't have to dive in deeper with us. But I want to give you um, read this passage of scripture this morning, and it's found in the book of Romans. And maybe you can relate with how this scripture goes. All right, I think we'll be up on the screen as I read it together. It says this in Romans chapter seven, starting in verse fifteen. It says, "I don't really understand myself." Anyone there this morning? Yeah. I don't really understand myself, Pastor. For I want to do what is right. I honestly believe there is an urge in everyone that really wants to do the right thing, but instead, what? I don't do it. I want to do the right thing, but, but, but I have this thing about me that doesn't do the right thing. Instead, I do what I what? Hate. Verse 18, I want to do what is right, but I can't. 19, I want to do what is good, but I don't. I want to do what is uh, what is it? I, I don't, but I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Maybe this sounds like someone this morning. Watch this, verse 24. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Anyone battling this conflict? Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? Maybe someone this morning, you find yourself, he's getting a good picture of it, you know what I'm saying? That's someone who wants to be a habitable person in Jesus' name, you know what I'm saying? But think about this this morning. We want to do the right thing. We, well, man, I'm pastor, I want to grow in God. I want to be someone who's free from, from maybe last week addiction. Maybe this week you want to be free from things that are constantly defining you. I want to be free, but the problem is, is we're constantly battling every single day. This thought which the writer of Romans was saying, I don't understand myself. I want to do what's right, but I always find myself doing the wrong thing. I want to make the right choices, but I always find myself making the stupid ones. I want to be wise financially, but I always find myself just wasting all everything I have. Oh, what a miserable person I am. And maybe you find yourself there this morning. But I love the last half of this verse because this is where we're going to end this morning. It says this. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and, sin and death? But watch verse 25. It says, but thank God. Someone say, thank God. Amen. Turn to neighbor, give him a high five and say, thank God. I don't have to stay miserable. I don't have to stay dominated by the self I hate or that little twerk about me that I just do not like. Thank be to God. The answer is in what? Jesus Christ our Lord. How awesome is that? As much as I'm dominated by the person I don't want to be, there's freedom this morning and the person God has called me to be. And this morning I pray this, you would have an open mind and open heart to what God speaks about you. Because I pray this morning, you would not hear, and I say this every week, you wouldn't hear what I have to say. Because this bald-headed guy has nothing cool to say, just know that. But Jesus wants to speak to your heart this morning. So I pray over these next couple moments, that God would open your heart to what he wants to speak as we talk about this thought of habits. Because I really believe there's people in here, man, you know, maybe you're like me, I want to stop eating junk food. You know what I'm saying? And it could be something as simple as that. I want to stop eating junk food. I want to be a better person. I want to be a better spouse. I want to, I want to be a, a, a good person for my future spouse. I, I want to prepare myself for this thing. But the problem is we have this like balance of who we want to be and who we actually are. And we're caught in the balance of that. And so you may ask yourself, you know, why do I always fail? Who I want to be, I cannot get there. Why can't I not strive to be the person I want to be like the verse was saying? I want to be in do what's right. I want to be a good person. I want to set myself up for success, but man, I can't. Why can't I be that? I want to give you three things this morning that I believe will help you and prepare you for where we're going to go as a church. Sound good? Come on, brother. And now if you don't say amen or hallelujah or stand up and shout for something, I'll keep pounding the point until you do, all right? So make sure you talk to me, all right? Sound good? Preach it, brother. I'm going to say hallelujah, right? Number one. Why can I not do what is right? Number one, we focus on 
on the what. Someone say what. what? But we don't understand the how. Come on, man. We focus on the what. That's the action. That's what we want to be. I want to be a godly man. I want to be a godly husband. I want to be a godly person. I want to be a healthy person. I want to be someone that people look at and are proud of. That's the action. Who I want to be. But here's the problem. But I don't understand how. I don't know how to get there. Like, I know there's some things to do. Read the Bible. Great. Where do I start? Pray. I got ADD. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was in the youth service one day, and the youth pastor would say, just pray to God. And I said, bro, I can't stay concentrated on one thing for two seconds. I got really bad ADD if you don't know me. During the message, I may go on a completely different subject. Just stay with me. Um, we'll get to where we're going. But we ask these things of like, man, I want to be this person that they may not just God's pleased about, but I can look in the mirror and say, wow, look what God has done. That's the what. Mm -hmm. And we tend to drive ourselves to the what. And we don't understand the how. Amen. I, I was thinking this thought that most people have similar goals. Mm -hmm. I never met someone that, one, that, that wanted to be a terrible husband. They wanted to get married so they could wreck their life and mess up their wife and have kids <laughs> and destroy their life. I never met someone. Have you met someone like that? Am I just doing it right? I've never met someone like that. Never met someone that, that said, man, I can't wait to, 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 to I wreck my life. I've never met someone like that. All of us have similar goals. And I was reading this book, and it's, it's called Atomic Habits. Um, last year, I set a goal. I, I hate reading. I'm just going to be honest. I don't like reading. But I set a goal last year to read a book a month. I ended up reading almost two books a month. It was really awesome. And I was really starting to download some things into my life that I really needed to see that God was starting to show me. One of the books was called Atomic Habits. Really good book on habits. And in the book, the writer says this. Whether you're a winner or a loser, whether you're successful or unsuccessful, everyone is striving towards the same goal. And here's what I mean by that. Every sports team wants to win the championship at the beginning of the season, right? Well, I used to play football back in high school. I was okay. There were some guys who were really good, and they would always put me against them because I was the guy that was like the dummy on the team. You know what I'm saying? Just put them up against that dude, and they'll beat them up, right? And they'd get on a drill, and I'd find myself getting blown up, and it was terrible. I, I'm telling you, man, I, I, I would come to sick practice like, I can't coach today. I take it easy. You know what I'm saying? Coach my leg, make up stuff so that way you can like light practice. Um, but here's the thing. I never heard my coach at the beginning of the season say, I can't wait because we're going to come in fifth place. Like, we're going we're gonna to strive for fifth place. If we start doing too good, we're going to lose some games because we're going to fit right in fifth place. So the beginning of the season, it was everyone's intention to win the championship, right? Mm -hmm. Come on, we're going to go all the way this year. We're going to be better than we were last year. I never met a team that was like, I can't wait to be in fifth place this year. Yeah. Right? I never met a married couple that said, man, you know, I want to get married, but I hope it only lasts five, maybe seven years. That would be good. And then we'll get a divorce and I'll, I'll do something else, right? I never met anyone like that. See, here's the thing. Successful people and unsuccessful people, people who are walking with God and people who are not, there's this common goal that they want to do the right thing, but they find themselves straying away from where they want to go. And here's why. The book kind of, I can sum it up to you. You may not like reading like me, so I'll give you the, the, the two sentences that sum the book up. Here's what it says. Goals don't discern your success, right? We're people, we live off of goals. We're in a new year. It's, it's said by um, Valentine's Day, which is this Thursday, everyone who had a New Year's resolution will stop it. So you got like a couple weeks to, to, to press on, unless you want to be part of the statistics, right? But it says this, goals don't determine success. Systems determine success. There you go. Goals don't determine success. Systems. And you may say, Pastor, what are you like? Preaching on business meeting? Like, we're in church. Like, I want to learn about Jesus. I want to. Yes, you do. And I know you do. But I want, to, I want you to understand in your life practically, if you strive for the goals, you're not going to create the healthy systems and put them in place to really see yourself shine. Can I give you a biblical example? Is that cool? Yeah. When I look at the Bible, all throughout Scripture, there are people, men and women, who had systems in place, and when they were tested, and when hard times came, they didn't fall, because there was a system in place. I'll give you an example. I was praying this week. One guy come to mind who I really love. I love reading the book. His name is Daniel. Someone say Daniel. Daniel, Daniel has a powerful story. 
You can read about it in the book of Daniel. Daniel has this awesome story. Guess what? He stood out. The, the, the Babylonians, they captured his city of Israel. They took everyone captive. But somehow, he stood out. And the king says, I need him to be a part of my inner squad. And he stood out. What made Daniel stand out? Why, out of all the young people that they took, why did this man, Daniel, stand out about, above all of them? Why in the world, when, when push came to shove, and he found himself in a den full of lions, did his faith not crack? And the man become like overwhelmed, like, this is it. These lions are going to eat me. I'm going to be a good meal with them. This is it, right? How come this dude never found himself broken or destroyed? Here's why. Follow the system. Daniel, for years, would do something. Three times a day, Daniel would get up and spend time with God. The Bible tells us three times a day. Three times a day, Daniel would get on his knees and pray to God. That was his system. If I want to be strong in this, in this area of my life, if I want to see God use me in a wicked community, guess what? i got to put a system in place that I can shine. Amen. So three times a day, Daniel would pray. So we all see the highlights like Daniel and the dot lines. Then yes, Daniel interpreting dreams. We love all of that. We say, man, God, could that be me? But you don't understand what it took to get to that place. Come on. You want to see God shine in your life, you got to put the right systems in place. Because here's, here's how the book kind of ends. It says you don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Daniel stood out. Not because when the moment came for the light to shine, he rose up to the challenge, but he had a system. Three times a day, the man would be on his knees praying to God. Saying, God, I need your strength today. God, I don't know what's going to come at me. But God, I need you three times. That was his system. Some of you guys, you find yourself failing and falling. I want, to, I want to be a woman. I want to be a, a, God, a, a guy who, who, who walks with God. But man, your life isn't set up in a way that, that is honoring to God. And so in a way, you're going to find yourself falling short. Because a lot of us think we need to change the result, right? I need to lose weight, so I need to change the result. Get all the junk food out of the house. Get all the sweet tea, if you're like me, out of the house. Get it all out of the house. We need to change the result, but we end up failing and falling because we, we, we strive for the result and the goal. And we're striving to, to be a better person, become more organized. Maybe, uh, maybe you find yourself in a deep hole and you want to be better. But the problem isn't so much, you know, we're striving towards the result and the goal. We need to change the system. Some say systems that causes those results. We need to fix what we do, and you'll see the outcomes fix themselves. Meaning this. Remember early on, I, I first started ministry, I became a pastor, a youth pastor. I had no idea what I was doing. A young dude had hair back then, looked a little crazy, you know what I'm saying? And uh, had no idea what I was doing. Did, didn't know how to even preach. I mean, if you were to listen, good thing they're not on tapes or something like that. It was terrible, man. We'd have service, and the kids would just be sitting there. One kid started smoking in the middle of, I'm not lying, smoking in church in the middle of my message. I'm like, oh my, what do you do? Like, you're smoking. And I just, you know, you just keep preaching, act like all the kids are smelling, like, what is that? And you turn around, there's a dude like, you know, like, hallelujah, pastor. And then, like, I didn't know that. Like, I'm like, what do you do? And I remember, I remember there was, there was a point in time where I realized this assignment is way too big for me. So I created a system personally in my life that I still do to this day. Every morning, I would get up early, and I'm not an early person. Please know that I am not. I don't like the mornings. Don't talk to me in the mornings. Don't even look at me, all right? I'm just not a morning person. If I had hair, it would be bad hair and everything, all right? Well, I created a system early on. I'd get up early. I would, I would get to the church where I worked. And before anyone was there, I'd, I'd, I'd walk around the sanctuary and I'd pray for an hour. I did this every single morning. I created this system in my life. If God, I want to see you do amazing things. If I want to be a God honoring man, there's something I have to put in place and to, to set a system in place to do that. Maybe you're here this morning. You want to lose that habit. You want to break something bad in your life. Come on. If we look at your life, what are the systems in place? That you have set because maybe you find yourself falling because you have the wrong system. Don't say system. We put the right we put the right systems in place. If we fix how we live our life, can I tell you what? The outcome will fix itself. So number one, focus on the what, but but we focus on the what, but we don't understand the how. You focus on what I want to change, but you don't know how to change it. This morning I want to tell you this: if you want to fix the thing that is binding you, that is carrying your life, don't fix on the what you want to change. Fix on the how am I going to do this? Come on, man. Fix, 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 fix on. Well, fix on. We, we're going to put some things in place that are going to help me. 
and protect me. And when things start to rise that come against me, there's things I'm doing now that are preparing me for where I want to go. Remember Daniel. He had a system in place. Pray three times a day. The pressure came. Guess what? Daniel was still Daniel was still tall. Someone say a big amen. amen. Number two, we don't see progress fast enough. How many of, how many of you like me? I like to see progress instantly, right? <laughs> I don't know about you, okay, just me, me and uh, CJ, we're the only ones. Anyone else like to see progress instantly? Like, we, we don't see progress fast enough. I'll tell you what, I hate, I'm like, I'm being open book today, man. Y'all gonna know everything about my life. Um, I don't like working out, all right, I really don't. But early on, um, I wanted, I, I wanted, you know, when I when I started in the dating world, I was like, I need to start working out at least a little bit, you know, so at least I'm like a false leg, at least I got some sort of muscles. So I was, I was work, I would start working out a little bit, and I get frustrated. I would, I would be on the elliptical all week, pushing myself hard, uh, trying to bench press, and I'd go, I would go early in the morning, because that's when, I would go early before all like the big muscle guys got there, so that way I could do my thing real fast and get out, and then they all show up and do their thing. I was weird like that. So, I would, I would do it all week, and I would step on the scale, and instead of me being like five pounds less, I was three pounds over. This stuff the right, I was like frustrated. Maybe some of you guys, you say, man, I want to get, I want to get right with God. You start, you start reading God's word, and you get on the Bible reading plan, something like that. You, you grab a devotional in the back. You start digging into God's word all, God's word all week. The next thing you know, you find yourself out the window cussing someone out because they cut you off, or, or you're walking down the road and they look at you wrong and you, you cuss them out. You're like, this thing doesn't work. I tried it for a week. It doesn't work. I met someone, and I wrote this down because it's funny, but you may not laugh, but I met someone one year, I was, um, they were like, you know, what? I'm in debt, I'm really in debt, I need, a, I need to get out. So all month long, they didn't buy coffee, they saved $100. So instead of being $37,500 in debt, they were $37,400 in debt. And they said, this thing doesn't work! The progress is not showing! Right? They want to see instantly what takes time. They want to see instantly, right? Go to the gym, I want to see instant progress. And this is what happens when we do that. We wrongly conclude small good decisions don't matter that much. We wrongly conclude small little decisions done over a period of time don't matter. That's what we wrongly conclude. So we give up. But let's flip the script a little bit. So maybe you find yourself frustrated that, that working out that works, so you go home and you play video games for five hours straight. Your eyes are bloodshot, your hands stuck to the controller, like you're just venting this thing off, right? And maybe your wife doesn't leave you, but she gets mad. What are you doing? Go out and make the money, right? You know, she gets mad, but she doesn't leave you. Maybe you find yourself, you skip church one, one weekend, you, skip, you miss a Sunday service, you skip one time. And it doesn't affect your life. You don't find your life in a whirlwind. You don't find everything out of whack. And you're like, okay, that wasn't as bad as what I thought. Maybe you eat half the box of chocolates, like me. You, no, look, babe, what are those ones I really like that are dangerous when they're around me? The, the vanilla ones, they, they, they're like a circle, and they have stuff in the middle, and you put them around, and they like explode in your mouth. It is, it is, like, it is like a 4th of July. And so you eat half the bag, and then you act like no one will notice, and then you, you sit back on the couch, and you realize, man, that didn't really affect me that bad. I don't feel that bad right now. And here's what happens, ready? Just as the good decisions, you say they don't matter, we wrongly conclude about bad decisions. Small bad decisions don't matter that much. We wrongly conclude that. But here's what we miss, and this is where I'm trying to get at this morning. Our life is the sum total of all. So let's say all. All the small decisions that we make. Our life is the sum total of all small decisions we make. So you wrongly conclude those good things aren't working, so you give up. You wrongly conclude, man, missing one, one weekend of church isn't going to affect me, my life's still held together. But you wrongly see things that your life is the sum total of every small decision you make. That's your life. See, those small bad decisions rarely wreck someone's life in one week. I've never seen someone wreck their life in one week with some small bad decisions. But what happens over time? That small bad decision becomes a habit. And next thing you know, over months, it train wrecks their life. You're the sum total of all the small decisions. But just as a bad decision, a small one can become a chain reaction. I want to give you hope this morning. Maybe you're here this morning, 
I'm saying, man, Pastor, I want to thank God for this. I want to, I want to follow Christ. Man, I want to, I want to be a man that my wife's proud. Of. I want to be a man. I want to be a woman that 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 people can can grow from and people can glean from. I want to be someone who's free from the habits that are binding me. I want to say this morning, the hard work that you put in. The hard things that you do, the disciplines you set in place now, the sacrifice you start to do right now, the faithfulness to God, like Daniel, you set up a portion of time each day where you're spending time with him. Over time, those small good decisions are being stored up and they will amount to something amazing. But here's the problem. You can't settle for a well-be. It is what it is. Didn't happen, you know. It was, it was, you know, small decisions. I was trying to do the good thing. I'm um, still like, like what Paul, what, what the wrong writer from Romans was saying. You know, I'm a miserable person. I, I don't do what I want to do, and I do what I don't want to do. I am miserable. What is wrong with me? But the thing is, we will we'll, we'll rise and fall to the level of our systems what we have in place. You are the sum total of all the small decisions. It's like this. I was thinking about this this week. I don't cook much. My wife does all the cooking. She's really good. I'm terrible at cooking. All right, you come over and you say, well, you cook me something. It's really either going to be really bad or really simple. All right, that's, that's the way I work. It's either going to be some ramen noodles and some instant mac and cheese and some sweet tea or something like that. It's not going to be nothing good, nothing um, gourmet food style. But one thing I do know how to do is this. I go up to the stove. I can crank it to the place where it needs to go, let the, let the water start to do its thing. Instantly, when I, when I turn the stove on and the water's sitting there and the flame bursts up, right? up behind that pot. I don't see like it like really hot and just dumping in what I need to do right away. That flame and the water start to do something. Over a period of time, it gets to 80 degrees, right? Over a period of more time, it gets to 140, then to 205, and then at 211, 211 degrees, you have really, really hot water, right? Like don't put your finger in because it's hot. But then something happens at 212 degrees. I'm not a scientist here, but I'm just sharing, you know, this is the fact. At 212 degrees, the tipping point happens, and now you have boiling water. So the little flame that you saw, you know, it's not doing anything. This water just staying. Over time, that flame was, was readjusting that water to where it needed to be. In your life, you're the sum total of the small decisions. And those things are adding up in your life. They're making you the person you are. If you're not happy, why don't you change the things that are going on? The small little decisions. Because the good decisions aren't being wasted. The God-honoring decisions that are helping you are not being wasted. Your time with God is not wasted. Your moments of prayer when you say, I don't feel anything today. When I, I'm crying out from my mouth, it's not being wasted. Your time reading God's word and getting it in your heart is not being wasted. It is being stored up Amen. to be the person God <coughs> called you to be. But listen, you cannot understand. It's not this thing of instant progress. We instantly want to see results and we get mad and, and upset when we don't. <clears throat> don't give up. Because what people don't see as you're putting those good decisions and God on your decisions. Here's what people don't understand. They don't see the, the, the things that you're overcoming, man. Through, through spending time with God, getting in church, and, and next week we're going to talk about developing small groups at a church, getting involved in church and, and being a part of God's body. They don't see the progress that you're making behind the scenes. <coughs> you're overcoming self-doubt. Maybe maybe you failed, but but you're starting again. Maybe, maybe you find yourself... Developing a prayer life. You find yourself sacrificing for the things of God. You find yourself coming early to church and helping serve. You find yourself enduring criticism and not like jabbing back. You find yourself getting up a little early to spend time with God. You find yourself going a little late to bed to spend time with God. Those habits are not being wasted. Someone say they're not. No. They're not. They're being stored up. It's the, it's the young people, they say it's the grind. We got to get the grind. You know what I'm saying? We want instant results. I want to be this person now. It's the grind. It's the grind. Someone say the grind. The grind. Go in the grind, aren't you? Amen. All right. Maybe not. I was talking to you, but I'm rolling out. Love you. All right. It's the persistent. It's the grind, right? Let's get a leash on it. So I wanted to, I wanted to just share this real fast. I'm going to move on from this thought. It's the things that no one sees that bring the results everybody wants. At, 20, at 28 years old, that's how old I am right now, right? I know I look a lot younger, but I'm 28, you know? At 28 years old, I get, I get in a room sometimes, 
for pastors who are much, much older than me, which I, I love that. <laughs> I love gleaning from that and learning from that. But one thing I get asked sometimes is they're like, how is a dude your age doing what you do? I said, well, there's no secret to it. And I'll say this, it's the grind. Like, you weren't there when I was 19 years old learning to develop a consistent prayer life. You weren't there when, when in the morning when everyone in my house is sleeping, I'm gleaning in God's word. You see, you see the, the end result, but you don't see the grind. You want to become a person of faithfulness. Uh, you want to become a woman of God. You want to become a, a person that, that people can look up to. It's the grind. It's not an instant result. It's the things no one sees that brings the results everybody wants to see. And I believe this morning there are going to be people in this church that are going to set yourself up to be that person, a godly woman, a godly mom, a godly person who's going who's gonna to say, you know what? It's the, it's the behind the scenes what no one ever sees that I put to become habits in my life. Galatians 6, 9 says this, let us not become weary in doing good. Someone say doing good. Doing For at the good. proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't become Amen. weary. Amen. It's the things no one sees that bring the results that everybody wants. I want to challenge you with that. Here's my last point. Our distorted identity sabotages our success. And here's what I mean by this. I'll, I'll go to that. I'll read it one more time. Our distorted identity sabotages our success. The enemy tells you what you are, and you connect it with, that's who I am. The enemy tells you you're a failure. You connect it with your identity, but you start to own it. It's who I am. Well, pastor, I'm, a, I'm an addict. It's who I am. You connect it with your identity, and you'll never overcome it. Pastor, I'm terrible with money. If you could give me five bucks, I'll have it gone in 30 seconds. You connect it with, it's who I am. You connect your failure with your identity, and it never lets you move on to who God's called you to be. Someone say amen to that. Amen. You didn't do the right thing. You're not good enough. You find yourself being a miserable person. You did it bad. You start to say, I am bad. You messed up. I am a mess up. You start to connect your failure with your identity. How many people you know, and maybe yourself, you do that a lot? I find myself sometimes doing that. I connect what I did with my identity, and before long, it starts to say that's who I am. That's the, that's the enemy that we have called the devil. That's what he loves to do. He loves to connect your failure with your identity. Someone say my identity. My identity. We see it throughout Scripture. One of the guys, his name was Moses. He had this thing that he didn't like. He was terrible at public speaking. And so when it came time, God showed up to him through a series of a burning bush. God said, Moses, I've set you apart to speak on my behalf to Pharaoh, who was the most powerful man in all the world at the time. Moses said, but God, I'm not good at speaking. He connected his failure to his identity. And in terms, it, it, it kind of caused some, some issues over time. His, 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 his brother-in-law actually had to step up to the plate and, and speak some of the things that Moses wouldn't speak. Why? Because he connected his failure to his identity, and it became who he was. Gideon. I love the story of Gideon, but, but you don't see the part in the beginning. You, you missed the part, maybe, or you have read it, but you didn't really catch it. Gideon, God showed up and said, Gideon, you're a mighty warrior. But Gideon said, you know what? And he was nervous because there was an enemy that, that had him nervous and had him hiding. And Gideon connected his weakness with his identity. He said, I'm the weakest of all the tribes of Israel. He connected his identity and his failure and his weakness. You with me so far? Even Paul, the apostle Paul, said this in, in, in the Corinthians. He said, I'm the least and unworthy person. Because who he was, he connected it. See, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves connecting our failure with our identity. And here's what's the bad part. An unhealthy identity creates unwise habits. Unwise habits reinforce an unhealthy identity. I'll read that one more time because it's a cycle. So many people, even on our streets right now, are caught in a cycle. Unhealthy identity creates unhealthy habits. I'm going to say habits. habits. But unwise habits reinforce the unhealthy identity. It's a cycle, and we can't tend to break it. That's why next week I'm going to be talking about this thought of a direction we're going to take in the church called s s small groups. Someone say small groups. small groups. Because many of you guys are battling with habits and things that are 
that your failure is creating an identity, and it's who you're saying that's who I am. I'm a mess up. I'm a. Uh, I'm a. Uh, I'm just who I am. And we're going to be talking next week as we embark on the new journey that God's going to take us on about this thought of small groups, or maybe we may even say life groups. Why? Because you're not going to no longer connect the failure with the identity. You're going to understand who, who God is and what He wants to do in your life. Because again, an unhealthy identity creates unwise habits. And unwise habits reinforce an unhealthy identity. And many of us, we walk in an identity that's not even ours to walk in. Because we're believing we're messed up. We're a failure. I'm just a mess up. So I encourage you with this. And, and some of this stuff is coming out of the book I read and, and, and applying it to God's word because it was good stuff. But one of the things is, is most people create do goals, right? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to, they make a list. I'm, and then there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to do, I'm going to do. But I want to challenge you as we step forward into um, this new season. I want to challenge you, instead of create do goals, do those things, list every day, that's, that's okay. But I want to challenge you this morning to start with a who goal. Who do you want to be? Don't start with Don't the do, you. what you have to do. Start with who do you want to become? Come on. Maybe you see this morning, Pastor, I want to be a true man of God. Mm -hmm. I want to be, that's a great who goal. That's a powerful who goal. Who goal. Man, Pastor, I want to be sober, I want to be clean. I want to be someone who's, 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 who's in his right mind all the time. That's a great who goal. Pastor, I want to be a godly wife. I want to be a godly mom. That is an amazing who goal. Pastor, I want to be financially free. Maybe you find yourself in a lot of debt. And Pastor, I want to be financially free. It's a who goal. That's a great who, who goal. Pastor, I want to be a bold witness. I want to come out on our outreach nights, uh, in our outreach days. I want to be a bold witness. That is a great who goal. Pastor, I want to be a healthy person. I want to, I want to, God says my body is a temple. I want to, I want to be a healthy person. That is a great who goal. <coughs> Start with the who. Who do you want to become? Because here's why. Identity shapes action. Someone say identity. identity. Your identity will shape who you become. Your identity puts action to work. Many of you guys can't break the habit you're in because you're identifying with who you are. Here's what I mean. I, I read this from a psychiatrist one time. It was an interesting thought. But, it, but it, was, it, was, it was so interesting the way he put it. And he was saying this. He says, I help people all the time overcome drugs and addiction. One of the most common ones I help is with cigarettes. And he says when someone comes in and they want to get free from cigarettes, um, or maybe the ciggy or the vape, right, whatever you call it, like they want to get free from the cig. And so, and so they'll come in, and what he'll do is, as they start the, the progress and, 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 and release the cigarette, he finds that a lot of them fail. When, when someone comes up and says, hey man, do you smoke? And, 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 and do you do that? And they say, no, I'm a smoker who tries to quit. They're connecting themselves with, the, with who they were. Does that make sense? I'm a smoker, I'm trying to quit, please no. And he, he says a lot of times, he said over 90% of the time, they'll take the cigarette and smoke it because they're connecting themselves with who they were. But he says he's found when he tells smokers the next time you're out on the street and someone's smoking and, and they maybe say, hey, man, you want a ciggy, you want a cigarette? They say this. They, he says if, he finds success when people say, I'm not a smoker anymore. They're connecting it with their past. Yeah. It's not who I am anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Your identity will shape your action. When you, when you connect, that's, that's who I was. You're not connecting it with who you are. Is that you with me? Yeah. Identity shapes action. You find yourself trapped, maybe. Like the man in, in Romans. I'm a man who, who, who wants to do what's right, but I can't. I'm a miserable person. You find yourself trapped. I want to give you hope this morning in Romans 6. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified. Someone say crucified. Yeah. With Christ. So that sin might lose its power. Someone say power. power. Sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer a slave to sin. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. Now you are free. Someone say free. Free from your slavery to sin. And you have become slaves to righteousness now. To the new person. That's not who you are anymore. Identity shapes action. Who I am in Christ. I'm a new creation. Who am I in Christ? I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God. Mm -hmm. I'm a son. I'm a daughter of the most holy king. That's who I am. That's who I am. Identity shapes action. So I gave you some unhealthy things to wrap stuff up. I want to give you some, some good things. Healthy identity creates positive habits. And positive habits reinforce a healthy identity. I'll read this one more time. I really believe, man, as a church, where we're going is that we're, next week we're going to start serving small groups. I really believe we have to get this in our heart. Healthy identities 
create positive habits. Positive habits reinforce a healthy identity. So I'll ask you the question this morning, who do you want to become? And the worship team, get ready to come up, and Tommy, and sorry, okay, one of the guys. Who, I ask the question, who do you want to become? Who do you want to become? So I started with myself. I, I was sitting down, getting the ser- finishing the sermon together. I sat down and I was thinking about right now, I told you I'm 28. Who do I want to become when I'm 70? That's a long way down, right? Sure is. I, but, but I sat down and I just was writing out some things of who do I want to become when I'm 70. And so here's some things I wrote down. I said, I want to be a guy who loves Jesus, who's obsessed with his bride, that hot wife up there. I want to be one day a great dad. And I even wrote this, I want to be a better pops. You know what I'm saying? Grandkids one day. I want to be a devoted pastor to the church that I want to. Come on. These are some things I wrote down. Who do you want to become? I want to be a strong leader who believes the best in people and helps them do more to make a difference in the world. I want people to not necessarily say this, but I want them to think it. I want them to think this, Paul. He was a wise steward. The guy took care of whatever was trusted to him. He took care of his influence, his money, his time, and he used it for the glory of God. Come on. And then maybe you'll say something like this. The dude is enjoying the ride, and he's rich in friendship and experiences. He's crazy generous, and he's going to leave one heck of a legacy. Who do you want to become? When you know who you are, you'll know what to do. Who do you want to become? Now, I met a pastor one day. He told me this funny story. Um, I was sitting with him, and he was he had an office. They were renting a building at the time. His office overlooked a parking lot. And while he was sitting there, two cars pulled up, and two teenagers got out. They started fighting each other. They took their shirts off. I mean, they start intensely fighting each other. The pastor, who's the lead pastor, he starts running through the office yelling, fight, 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 fight. And another pastor followed him out to the parking lot, and they're sitting there, and they're, they're watching it. And these two kids are wailing at each other, busting each other up. And literally, he said, 45 seconds in, they both turned to each other at the same time, and they like looked at each other like, what are we doing? They're like, one, we're grown-ups. Two, we're Christian grown-ups. Three, we're pastors that are Christian grown-ups. What are we doing? He's like, even though it was a good fight, we broke it up, and you know, we, we, we were adults. But, but it was this interesting thought that he was sharing of, of when you know who you are, Come on. you know what to do. When you know whose you are, you know what to do. Identity shapes actions. Yeah. When I know whose I am, what to do. When you define who you want to be, you'll know what to do. Amen. How many people I meet, Pastor, I want to be free from addiction. Well, if you know who you want to be, you'll know what to do. I can't do that. Well, who do you want to be? Ask you just one sitting in the chair. Who do you want to be? You want to see progress. You want to see God change your life. You want to see him instill habits that will affect your future, make you a godly woman and a godly man. Who do you want to be? No single action changes your identity, but multiple actions over a period of time will change who you are. Remember what I said earlier, successful people do consistently what other people do. Occasionally, who do you want? To be. I want to challenge you for a moment as we wrap up service right now. We're in February, week, two weeks in. I ask you, who do you want to be? I want you to take a minute right now in your seats. I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about who you want to be. Who are you right now? And who do you want to be? Because the who you want to be will affect the action of what you do. See, when I know who I am, I know what to do. Some of you guys, you find yourself doing the wrong things. You find yourself in in addiction. You find yourself in in, in things that are wearing you down. Why? Because you don't know who you are. Identity shapes our actions. That's why I want to look at 
people and you may say, man, that person, that's a fraud. That person says this. That person smokes all these things. See, they're connecting themselves to an identity that God never maybe gave them to be. But when you start to let them see who God created them to be, you start to see their actions start to portray who they are called to be. But maybe you sit here this morning and you're, you're a Christian, you're saved, you're going to heaven, but you find yourself doing things that find yourself in a place, man, I, I don't want to be that. I want to be a healthy person. I want to live a long life. I want to be a good student of what God's given me. All these things are, are great things, but it starts with who do you want to become? So right now, I'm just right now, while, while your heads are bowed, guys, I want you to take a moment. Think about this. And let the Spirit of God instill in your heart who do you want to be. Who do you want to be? Ten years from now, who do you want to be? Thirty years from now, who do you want to be? Some of you guys, if you're not careful, you won't make it five years. You won't make it ten years. Because your habits are affecting your identity, which are affecting your actions. But who do you want to be? And as a church, I'm, I'm believing that we're going to instill healthy habits as a church that are going to create healthy identities. Who do you want to be? Don't connect with what you are in the moment. That's who you were. I just want you to take a moment in your seat. Let the Spirit of God speak to you. This morning you find yourself far from God. You find yourself away from God. You're not serving God. Maybe you once were, but you're not any longer. Maybe you need to start with first finding your identity in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If anyone's in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is gone, it's passed away. Behold, I'm making all things new. And if you're here this morning and you need to accept Jesus in your heart to be your Lord and Savior, right now in your chair, wherever you find yourself, wherever you find yourself, fill it. You know if you're not right with God. Right now in this moment, you can say something as simple as just, Jesus, I give you my life. God, I give you all my sin. I give you all my dysfunction. I give you all of my worry. I give you everything that separates me from you. God, would you make me a new person? Take away my sin. In the power of Jesus' name, would you make me a new person this morning? Maybe you find yourself here this morning and you're serving God. But there's little things that if you're not careful, they're going to add up. And they're not healthy things. They're just little things. And the Spirit of God wants to speak to you and say, be careful because that's not going to let you become who you need need to become, it's going to destroy your life. And, 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 and right now, the Spirit of God wants to say, who do you want to become? Become a woman of God? Yes. You become a man of God? Yes. And, and when you start to associate with the identity, you'll know what to do. Man, I've got to get more in this word. I've got to develop a prayer life. You'll know what to do. So God, I pray for your sons and daughters right now, God. And I pray right now, wherever someone finds themselves this morning, they find themselves weak and, and maybe like the apostle was writing in Romans, a miserable person maybe, they find themselves there. God, I pray no longer will they connect their identity with their failure. They will connect their identity with, with, with the mistakes of the past. But God, even right now, behold, you begin to make all things new. God, they are a child of God. Maybe right now someone just said that prayer this morning, received you as Lord and Savior God. Right now, they are a new creation. The old has been gone and, and destroyed and covered by the blood of Jesus. So God, I pray right now we will be a church that create healthy habits in our life. We'd have healthy identities. We would know who we are. And we would know what to do. We wouldn't find ourselves failing when temptation and trials come. We wouldn't find ourselves failing when, when problems start to well up because we know who we are. And so we'll know what to do. God, strengthen your church. Strengthen your people. God, I pray next week as we embark on this new thought of of becoming part of a church that even breaks down into smaller groups, God. I pray we would start with the question of who we want to become, because that will help us get plugged into things that we need to do to be that person. So for, I pray today, God, strength over your people, health over your people, God, I pray right now that you would open our hearts and minds to receive what you have to say, God. I pray your word went forth this morning, and I pray they would forget what my voice sounds like or what I even look like, but God, they would remember what you spoke into their heart, and let them take away from this moment who they are in you. And I pray this morning some people get a vision for their life. They would know who they want to be. And that would help shape their actions. And they would know what to do. And we love you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name.
Amen. Amen. Look, I love you guys.